Welcome back to Soccer X TV. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Kareem Ray, the CEO and co-founder of One Soccer Nation. He has recorded over 250 podcasts in the beautiful game with individuals both on and off the pitch, wrote a book at age 18, and is working on launching a professional soccer club in the United Soccer League. Kareem, thank you so much for joining us today on Soccer X TV. Sharma, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. So let's just kick it off. And I think my first question to you would be, what inspired you to start One Soccer Nation? And can you tell us more about what you do? Absolutely. So I started playing soccer at the age of four, all the way from grassroots to semi-pro levels in Canada. I uh, went to England in 2018, went to France in 2019, trying to go pro. I was down there for three months. And then the last country I played soccer in was in the United States for Naples United Naples United FC in the MPSL League Division 4 in the U.S. Soccer Pyramid. And the thing that was really holding me back was my Canadian passport uh, when I was trying to go pro in these different countries. Um, and, you know, something that I learned along the journey was that you either need to get a work visa or the club has to get a work visa in order for you to get legally paid and stay, uh, you know, stay a long time in these countries uh, legally. And I didn't know that when I was trying to go pro. So there's there's a few things that players are going to come across when they're trying to go pro, if they're trying to go pro overseas and not in their backyard. And the reason I was always trying to go pro outside of Canada was because at the time when I was growing up, we didn't have a professional league to look up to. It wasn't until 2019 where they came out with the Canadian Premier League, uh, where players now, Canadian players now can look up to and go pro in. So it really, you know, once Soccer Nation is really my DNA, growing up, playing it, being obsessed, uh, you know, I played for 20 plus years. Um, and then it was uh, one of my mentors, Jay Waterman, who, you know, really planted the seed of, why don't you start a professional soccer team? You know, that, that was the first question. And it was, it's kind of the same story with the book. When I was 18, he's like, you know, do you know how to go pro? And I was like, no. He's like, well, you should write a book to figure out what the, the exact stuff that you need to take in order to go pro. So it was really like those seeds being planted and being like, whoa, like I could do this. And then going out, figuring out how to do it. And then now we're here with One Soccer Nation. And our goal is to give unknown superstars a chance to go pro. And how we're planning on doing that is by launching our own professional soccer team in the United States. We're working towards the United Soccer League, uh, launching both a men's and women's team. That's honestly incredible. And it kind of filters on to the next question as well, where I'm going to ask, how does One Soccer Nation leverage social media to reach and engage with undiscovered soccer talents? Absolutely. So podcasting started back four years ago in 2020, and I was just focused on interviewing professional soccer players that play in MLS, USL Championship, USL One, NISA, MLS Next Pro, and other professional soccer leagues, or professional football leagues, I should say, around the world. And um, it, the goal for me in the beginning was to learn how to go pro because that was my main focus. Um, and then I quickly learned that there was other people within the beautiful game on and off the field that were interested to share their stories. And, uh, and at the same time, I wanted to learn from them and also provide value to the world because we're living in a digital time where people can access the internet all around the world and share valuable content, um, whether that's a player wanting to learn how to go pro or, um, you know, uh, future club owners wanting to learn from existing club owners now that own uh, professional teams, uh, co coaches, scouts, agents, et cetera, et cetera. So I started interviewing uh, everyone on and off the field, sharing that valuable content uh, with people online through YouTube, uh, podcasts, um, and it's been such an amazing experience. And the last point I'll mention is that I feel that podcasting is like a super hack to networking uh, you're providing value to someone, you're sharing someone's story, you're learning, um, and then those can lead to, to other introductions and, and creating relationships. So it's, it's such an amazing platform to, to, be, to be on and to leverage. I think it also gives that human interaction between social media and just seeing something, where as you can actually have a conversation with someone and dive deeper into their insights and kind of gain their knowledge as well. Absolutely, yeah. So how do you envision the evolution of One Soccer Nation in the global soccer landscape? That's, you know, when, when I looked at the questions that you, when you sent it to me, I, that was probably one of the hardest questions for me to answer because 
we have such a big vision. Our goal is to, to work towards multi-club ownership, MCO. And we're, we're really, what we've got to really focus on now and be laser focused is launching that per, first professional soccer team. And we're looking at launching it in the US. So we've, um, we've completed doing market research. We did market research in about um, five different states. We did market research in California, Nevada, uh, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and a little bit in the Northeast. Uh, we're, we're particularly uh, keen on one specific market. Um, and within this market, we've identified a few stadiums, uh, potential uh, two potential PTOs, um, and uh, a few strategic partners. So it's been super exciting uh, to finally know exactly where we're going to launch this, this first team, and we're working towards acquiring the rights from USL. And with saying that, you know, I've been pitching investors for the last two years. Um, you know, one of the questions that people would always ask me or investors would always ask me is, Cream, what market are you guys going to? And I'd, I'd always say, we, we don't know yet. We're working <laughs> towards that. But I love when that question comes up now because I have an answer for it, right? We've done our due diligence. We've done the work. Um, and we're now looking at, at long, uh, acquiring the rights to this specific market. And then once we acquire the rights, um, we're, you know, I, I mean, also, we'll, you know, we'll have to pay for those rights. So we're, we're, raising, we're currently raising capital. Uh, and we're looking at building a soccer village. So I'll, I'll touch a little bit on, on it. Um, what that means, building a soccer village, is you'll, you'll hear a little bit about, uh, or a lot about now, mixed-use development projects. You know, I think one of the big ones recently with USL is the USL Championship uh, Club in Rhode Island FC up there in the northeast of the United States. Um, they're building a, a beautiful a stadium that's more than uh, 5,000 plus seats up, up there in the probably seven plus thousands. Um, and then you got the stadium being the anchor or the, as I like to say, the soccer centerpiece in the community. And then it's a community asset bringing, bringing the community together to create memories and be a positive space. Um, but also is the opportunity for other real estate to be around the stadium. So whether that's condos, um, hotels, residential, retail, parking lots, um, restaurants, all these different hard assets that could be part of this project that's not just soccer. So um, it, it's such an exciting time of where soccer is in, in America and the opportunity for investors to get in before the 2026 World Cup, which is in about a year and a half. I think that really encapsulates the growth in soccer in the States as well. And then I know you've probably had so many different experiences and you probably can't pick just one, but what would you say the most rewarding part of your journey has been? The most rewarding part of my journey has been uh, to be able to learn from such amazing, great people within the beautiful space on and off the field and accumulate this uh, amazing knowledge within the beautiful game. And at the same time, be able to share it uh, with the world uh, for people to find valuable content and learn. Um, and then I, you know, I think one of the coolest experiences have been when I went to a few events, even Soccer X being one of them. And then there was another event recently here in Toronto uh, that I went to and I had a person come up to me and say, uh, you know, hey, are you cream? And I was like, yeah. And, you know, the, the individual was like, you know, she, she, she watched one of my videos. Um, it was uh, the president at the time of Toronto FC. Um, uh, and she watched the full interview that I did with him because she was working towards getting a job and she was preparing for that interview. So she wanted to learn as much as possible about this individual. And, you know, my, one, of, one of my videos was a part of that piece to the research and, and preparation that she was working towards. And when she shared that with me, I was like, wow, there, I, I, you know, um, I'm so uh, appreciative and grateful to be able to help, um, you know, other individuals along their journey. So again, providing value is always important to me to, to provide value to other people. And I think it's probably only just the beginning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then lastly, can you tell us more about any new partnerships that you have in the pipeline? Absolutely. So we just finished up a, a super cool I shouldn't say finished up, but a beginning of a super cool collaboration with O Sports. So they did a really 
cool video animation that was actually only supposed to be 60 seconds, but it's two minutes. I've, I've shared it with you. It's a, it, yeah. it showcases uh, a mixed use development project. So it was super cool. Um, we also had um, uh, uh, um, an, an individual um, from O Sports on our podcast as well. It's a 40 minute interview uh, about architect and they do uh, mixed use development projects. They help in that regards. Um, so again, O Sports. And uh, the podcast that we did was about uh, MLS, the Major League Soccer, Philadelphia Union. Um, it was about seven plus fields building a youth academy to go alongside their MLS club. And the really cool thing that I liked about it is the investment that MLS is looking towards investing into the youth to, um, to create a strong foundation for grassroots to produce uh, uh, players to then take them to overseas and, and transfer them for, for, for huge uh, for huge numbers in sales and, and players can range from a million to hundred million dollars plus in sales. So that's where uh, the United, the, I think the U S and MLS specifically is going to start be, start focusing more on those player transfers. Uh, and I'll, I'll mention one last thing in regards to transfers. We've seen, um, you know, the Messi effect uh, happen in America in Miami. Uh, and, 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 you know, alongside Messi was other players like Sir, uh, Suarez, Jordi Alba, Sergio Busquets, the super team, in Miami at uh, Inter Miami FC, uh, CF, mm -hmm. um, and the effect that that's having in the U.S. and the attraction that's bringing that's just a trailer to what the 2026 World Cup will be. But as well, the the U.S. and Major League Soccer and other leagues like the United Soccer League are now looking to transfer players out to Europe for those big profits. Um, um, and with saying that, to answer the, your question, um, so uh, you know I, I got to leave the best for last. Um, soccer, of course. <laughs> an exciting uh, media partnership with Soccer X that we just secured, uh, and I'm super excited to be attending uh, Soccer X for the second time. Um, uh, what is it? This this year? Uh, yeah, November, in November. The 13th to the 14th in Miami at the Hard Rock uh, Hotel in Miami. Um, yeah, super yeah. excited to attend again for the second time. I think I think this venue that you guys got that like this is going to be. Top of, the, top of the line. It definitely encapsulates the glitz and the glam of what's happening in the States at the moment and also the growth of, of like, oh, I would say football, but soccer in the States. And I think it's going to be a massive ramp up going into 2025 and then obviously the World Cup in 2026 as well. 100%. I agree with you so much. And um, I'm, I'm super excited to, to be working alongside with you, Kayla, and to collaborate with SoccerX. Uh, for this upcoming event to be the face and the voice of Soccer X um, and, and produce uh, in, in, in studio interviews and in hand mic uh, interviews around the event. So I'm looking forward to seeing everyone at Soccer X in Miami or, as you guys say, in the Magic City. Yes. <laughs> well, Kareem, thank you so much. And on behalf of Soccer X, we're really looking forward to working with you. I mean, before the event and at the event itself. And then thank you again so much for joining Soccer X TV. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kayla, for taking the time. I really appreciate it.